everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today's video is going, the chit chat part is going to be quite, quite short because I'm going to um, show you how I made a gooseberry pie. And that is what the video is about. So if you're into baking and want to know how I did it, stick around and you can watch that. Um, so that's what the video is of today, and that's I guess it for now. I will talk to you all again tomorrow. So you have a great, happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. I was about to make a pie, and I thought, you know, I see a lot of people when they go to measure fat or their, their lard or whatever they're using for their pie, they always use a regular measuring cup. Well, I put water in here, and because I want three-fourths of a cup of um, fat. I'm trying bacon fat. I've never made a pie crust with bacon fat, but we're going to try it. You put a quarter cup of water in here, and then you put um, the fat in there, and when you go to take it out, you use a spatula. I'm not going to take you over to the sink because I really can't take you over there to show you, but maybe maybe I can do it in a bowl or something. I'll, I'll drain it in this. Normally you would go over to the sink and do this. I'll do it here because I'm all by myself and Jim's not here to help me. But you just would have your, you have your fat in the water. Drain your water off and your container has very little fat in it as you can see. Because you're, and then you, you put it, and then you just put this into your flour that you're using. And really, there's, it's, it's hardly any, any, um, left in there. And I see a lot of you that struggle with it. Just use a little bit of water. And you, and you put the water according to, if you wanted a half a cup of fat, you would have put a half a cup of water. Now for my pie crust, because I like I use less fat, because um, I think of, I think it's two cups of flour and a and I don't know how much maybe it's three fourths cup of fat, and I used to use only a quarter cup, but I'm gonna, I'm not chancing it today. Then you put in a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just gonna put some salt in there. Okay, and then. You can use a fork or a pastry blender. I happen to have a pastry blender because I used to make a lot of pies. And what I do is I just kind of keep a little flour on the pastry blender and you cut through the, whoops, cut through the fat. So I will do that. The whole goal is to try to get this to be like um, pea-sized um, little particles. Okay, after you've got it like little pea, it's real, it's mixed real well. You want it to this point. Now, typically, I would take it over to the sink to get my water, but because I'm by myself, I'm going to do it all here. But first, you want to remove your rings and put them in a little dish so you don't lose them because. That would be horrible. I have lots of rings. Now, after your hands are washed, which I've already done a thousand times over, I'm going to put my sleeves up so that they're out of the way. You're going to put in your in your um in your mixture four tablespoons of cold water. I use cold water from the faucet. You can use um ice water if you want to. I never have done that. I just used four of the cold and I put cold water in. Okay. After I've shook as much as I want to shake, then I start with my hands in the in the mixture, which I will do now. I just kind of pat. Because what you want it to do is you, you're hoping that your your dough will make a pie crust without overworking it. The the tough pie crusts come because people overwork them. This is not a keto dish. Definitely not. I'm making it because I know my kids are coming and the last few years I haven't really made any pies. This one's going to be a gooseberry pie made with bacon grease. Can you believe that? This ought to be a different kind of flavor. 
This is going to be a really tender, tender, tender crust. Because if you've used lard for um, making anything, it's always more tender than if you used man-made stuff, Crisco. After you've got it together, it's like one nice ball, we're going to make our pie crust. Pie dish that I'm going to use. It's just a glass, regular size pie dish. And what you will do, first you flour your board a little bit. This is my old pie board that when I was at home, it's just a piece of plywood that I have used for, oh gosh, this board is, this board is old. And I have, <laughs> wait to see my bowling, my, my, I keep my pie, my rolling pin in a sock. See, it's a sock. And I, you never wash these. You just put them back, you wipe them off good and put them in the sock. And before you begin, you powder it or flour it. As my kids used to say powder. You flour it. And I like the ones where the handles don't spin. It's like using a French, if you were a French roller, you'd be using it with the, this. I don't like the ones that spin because you, you don't have any control over the dough. Because this is a double crust pie, I'm cutting it in half. I'm only going to use half of it. And you make and when you start to make a pie, it's what you want it to be round, so it's going to be round when you get done. So you might as well start with a little bit of round. Make it round. And I like to I like to do this. I put an X in it. Why? I don't know, because I always did. And then I put the other direction, and it kind of keeps it going the same. And then I, because I don't want the edges to crack right away, I take the moment to try to close them up. And spin it, and spin and press, spin and press. And then I'm going to pick it up and make sure that my board is nicely floured. I can see the pepper flakes in here. There is pepper in this one. Oh, those kids, well, they'll just have to deal with pepper flakes. We buy the peppered bacon when we buy it. So if you're seeing little spots on my on my um pie, it's because it's the pepper. This ought to be interesting. And you just keep going around, try to maintain the round shape. And when you think you're big enough, you take your pie plate, measure. Oh yeah, I'm big enough. Okay, turn this time instead. Okay, to pick it up, I do this. Roll it up off, and then you roll it back on. Now, I have to get the berries in it. These are gooseberries. We're making a gooseberry pie. I've never made a gooseberry pie before. These are frozen, but that's okay. I didn't think of it until just a little while ago to make it. And I'm going to put probably a cup of sugar in this only because these gooseberries are not sweet. These were the neighbor lady gave me um, these gooseberries. And um, she picked them before they were really ready be honest. They should have been more red and more purplish looking. Oh, it's raining outside. We have rain today. I'm going to put probably um, four tablespoons of flour in it at least. I'm just guessing with this recipe because I've never made a gooseberry pie before. This ought to be interesting. Then we're going to stir it. I hope everything is showing in the thing. This is so hard. Usually Jim would just have the other camera right above me and you would see what's going on. But he's at work. And I put my dog in his little house and he's probably saying, what the heck? It's going so long this time. Usually you're done. And it's going to take a little while. I'm just going to dump them in.
This dough is really tender. I can feel it. It's tender. I think it's big enough. I'm hoping. Let's see. Oh. Yep, I think it's big enough. And that's how I put it on. And these are my kitchen shears. The only ones I use. I use them only for food. If the kids were here, they'd be playing with the extra that I cut off. They'd be rolling it out and we'd be going, we would find a apple or something or some sugar or something, sugar, something sweet. And for my pies, a lot of people will turn them upward. I turn them under. I was taping and all of a sudden the camera turned off on me. Right here is where I'm just making like little, they're called fluted edges. And I just pinch my indents that I just made. Try to make it pretty. Unfortunately, I broke it over here. But it's frozen underneath there. It's still frozen, which is okay because it's just, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Too late now. Not doing it. I normally put butter pats on there, but I forgot. Oh, well. It'll be okay. I don't know why you put butter pats there. My mother used to do that, so that's why. You always need vent holes for pies. Steam can escape. Because this will have a lot of moisture, probably, I'm going to poke also around the edge. And because I never know if my pies are going to leak or not, I put the pie on a cookie sheet. And I put a piece of foil here just to make it easier for me to clean if it should leak. Only because I don't want to clean up a bad mess from a pie. Put this on there and put it in the oven. I thought while we wait for the pie to cook, I will show you what the dressing looks like. This is before it is baked. It's got cauliflower, broccoli, and then I use three different meats because when I made my other dressing, it would have, the, of course, the bread in it. This has no bread in it. And I would put turkey, ground beef, and sausage in there. So there's three meats in there besides the cauliflower and the broccoli. And I believe I have a little bit of shredded carrots in there because I still kind of keep it to my, and mushrooms. I still try to keep it like what my other dressing was. It's just there's no bread in this. This would be considered a keto dressing. Well, the pie is done. As you can see, it did leak out of the little air holes. But it's done. I'm going to take it out. Well, there is the pie. It is all done. Looks pretty good for not making pies for a long time. Not as pretty as some of my pies have been. But then again, I haven't made one in probably, I don't know how many years, many years. So this will be for tomorrow. I'm not going to cut into it because it will be for tomorrow.